Hello everybody. I am back with a brand new video presentation on ISO standards. I am sure a lot of you are going through our regular updates on YouTube wherein we come out with different standards and articles and know-how on various ISO standards. Up till now, we have made more than 100 up updates on YouTube wherein we tell you about different clauses on ISO standard, implementation methodology and tips from our expert ISO consultants that might help you in implementation of ISO standards in your organization. In this latest edition on our YouTube update, we are going to cover a very important standard. The standard is ISO 17025. It is a standard for laboratory accreditation. Now increasingly, all the laboratories across the world, be it a test laboratory or a calibration laboratory, they all are getting in favor of ISO 17025 accreditation. So we thought this is the right time for us to come out with an update on ISO 17025 accreditation. Technically, this ISO 17025 accreditation is very much in sync with ISO 9001 standard. So if you are a test laboratory or a calibration laboratory, that has got some kind of exposure to ISO 9001 standard, implementing ISO 17025 standard should not be your big task. When I say implementation, means basic initial understanding. Because ISO 17025 standard is also a quality management standard, but specifically designed for test or calibration laboratory. So let's try to briefly understand what this standard is all about. What are the benefits? either a test laboratory or a calibration laboratory can get out of it and what is the implementation methodology and more importantly how we Lakshya Management Consultant Private Limited can assist you, partner you and become your implementation associate in your ISO 17025 laboratory accreditation project. To start with ISO 17025 standard is a standard for competence of test or calibration laboratory. So when I say competence, competence of a test laboratory, competence of a calibration laboratory, what do I mean? When ISO 17025 standard says competence, it means competence of the personnel, the people, the people who do the test or calibration, competence of the equipment, competence of the process and competence of the overall setup. Okay, having said that, ISO 17025 known as Quality Management System for Laboratory, majority of you must be aware what is a quality management system. It's a management system with a holistic approach with process driven modules, system approach to management, intending to standardize the overall operations of an organization. So that whatever output you are delivering, is consistent in nature. Now, to tell you about the structure of ISO 17025 standard, the standard is divided in five major clauses. Like ISO 9000 standard, it was divided in eight major clauses. ISO 17025 standard is divided in five major clauses. Of this, clause number one, two, and three do not give any requirement. So, implementation requirements start from clause number four and clause number five. So technically there are just two clauses that we need to concentrate on. Clause number four, that is management requirement. Clause number five, that is technical requirement. Now those with exposure to ISO 9000 standard would be happy to know, would be delighted to know that clause number four of ISO 17025 standard is nothing but 85%, 90% of ISO 9000 on standard. So those laboratories, those test laboratories, those calibration laboratories that has already implemented ISO 9000 on standard would automatically achieve a major degree of compliance to clause number 4 of ISO 17025 accreditation. So what we are talking in clause number 4 of ISO 17025, we are talking about having a quality policy for the laboratory, we are talking about having a quality objectives for the laboratory. We are talking about having documented document control. We are talking about record control. 
we are talking about internal audit we are talking about supplier management in terms of selection of supplier supplier appro approval supplier evaluation supplier re-evaluation we are talking about control of incoming inspection now quality in terms of having incoming inspection quality plan incoming inspection records we are talking about the hr aspect that is creating an organization structure we are talking about creating roles responsibilities and authorities for each of the employees we are talking about doing a competence evaluation for the people we are talking about identification of trainings we are talking about maintaining training records in addition to that Clause number four also talks about a very important issue about customer management. In terms of how do you receive samples for testing or calibration, what is the process? The basically customer uh, related part of clause number uh, 7 of ISO 9001. So similarly, it is to be addressed in clause number four about customer management. Now, in addition to that, ISO 17025 has clause number eight, clause number five. This is a technical requirement and this is what is totally different the most demanding aspect and sometimes little difficult to implement why it is difficult to implement it is difficult to implement because a lot of laboratories across the world do not find a right implementation partner a consulting company like Laksha management consultant who can tell the requirement in black and white we are expert we know what it takes to comply with a particular requirement. So we do all the task of demystifying the requirements, the technical jargons and tell you in black and white, hey, if you want to meet with this requirement, this is what you need to do, as simple as that. So that you can straight away from day one, start going on the compliance mode. So clause number five of ISO 17025 accreditation has several important requirements first of all it talks about having a set of standard operating procedure or a test procedures very important because you want to achieve standardization another important issue that we need to comply in iso 17025 clause number five is about method validation now a laboratory can have three kind of different methods one set of method is a method that is internationally accepted the universally practiced method like an IS method like an ISO method like an ASTM method or any other internationally practiced method if you are following the same method method you need not validate your process straight away you can document and get going another is a method developed specifically by the laboratory in case the method is developed by a laboratory or it's a special method you need to validate the method what do i mean by method validation process validation in the simplest explanation to method validation is if there is a process that you are employing for test or calibration you as a person in charge of laboratory you should be confident of the capability of the method or process to give you desired output so if it is a specific in-house developed method the standard would expect that you employ one of the standard methodology for method validation using which you can establish confidence over your method to deliver your desired output another important requirement would be interlaboratory comparison you as an organization would be required to participate into either proficiency testing or interlaboratory comparison and make sure that the output delivered by your laboratory is in tune with other laboratory another very important part in technical requirement iso 17025 would be calculation of measurement of uncertainty now every measurement that a laboratory does testing or calibration would have a certain error associated with it so we need to identify what is the calculation of uncertainty measurement? What is the different uh, parameters that might affect the reading or our testing or calibration result? And what is the calculation of it? And what is the reading associated with it? So there is a whole statistical formula associated with, with it. We as an organization would assist you in completing your uncertainty measurement so that you can complete the all the technical requirements, get complied with all the requirements, be ready for accreditation audit 
and get your laboratory your, get your laboratory accredited to ISO 17025. Now, as an organization expert in ISO 17025 consulting, we advise to all the laboratories across the world, do not get fear out of ISO 17025. It is a different standard, but it is not difficult. With an expert advice from us, our expert consultants will make the process very simple, will make the process easy to implement and in the particular pre-identified project uh, planning way. So come to us, talk to us, we'll tell you what you need to do to accredit your laboratory as per ISO 17025, be it ISO 17025 as per NABL, as per UCAS, as per ASO, as per LAB or any other national accreditation board. We are confident of our achievement of our consultant to help you or to partner you achieve ISO 17025 accreditation for a laboratory. Thank you very much and wish you luck in your ISO 17025 project. Thank you very much.